Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a 3D printing asset manager solution called Van Dam. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. YourCDKey.com is a great place to get Windows 10 keys at incredibly low prices. So here we are on the Microsoft Windows 10 Pro page, and right here you can see the current price is $20.05. But if you use the coupon code that's in the description down below, you'll get it even cheaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here and click apply. And now our new total for Windows 10 Pro is about 15 bucks. Now I have the option to go ahead and view the keys right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Then I'll click on get the key. And then I'm gonna come over here and right there you can change the product key. So go ahead and click on that. I'm gonna go ahead and change the product key right here. So I've entered my key and I'll click next. Then I'll click on activate. And here we can see that Windows is activated. Next, what we wanna do is go ahead and validate the key installation. And right there, you can see that Windows 10 Professional Edition is permanently activated. So head on over to yourcdkey.com to get your next Windows 10 Pro key at ridiculously low prices. So as you guys know, I spent a lot of time on Reddit looking for different video ideas. And yesterday I actually ran across a post that intrigued me. Uh, if we take a look here, we can see that somebody, uh, control BRK, uh, posted what's the biggest missing piece of the, of the puzzle in the self-hosted universe. And uh, right here, somebody said a self-hosted STL library like Thingiverse, Colts, Things, etc. cetera. Uh, I did some research, I did some digging and, and ended up finding a service called Van Dam. And if we take a look, uh, over here on the uh, GitHub page, uh, here we can see that it is a self-hosted digital asset manager for 3D print files. And of course, it's got all the appropriate tags down here. And if we take a look, we can see that this has been in development for a while and has actually been updated fairly recently in just the last couple of days. So here we can see that Van Dam is a digital asset manager specifically designed for 3D print files. Uh, create a library pointing to your files on disk and it will scan models and parts. Uh, it assumes that any folder containing STL or OBJ files are models and within them are parts. Uh, you can view the files easily through your browser. So that's what I wanna show you how to handle in this video. So uh, if we actually, you know what, let's, let's actually do this first. Let's take a look. This is what I've got set up on my uh, my my actual home server, the one that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I've got it installed, it's up and running. I've, I'm calling it production uh, because I've actually got stuff in here that I will use later, stuff I've already printed, stuff I wanna reprint, things like that. When you come to the homepage, you get, you, you get this. However, if we click on libraries, here you can see some stuff that I have in here. Uh, you know, I just actually printed this yesterday for the inside of my aquarium, it was actually version two. And you know, here we can actually view the STL file. You know, we can we can spin it around, we can look at it however we want. Mostly, we can't actually. You know, there's there's nothing in here to uh, you know to slide the layers up and down, but we can get a good 3D glimpse of <clears throat> what the the model will look like. Um, you know, another good example of this uh, is this one. I actually printed this uh, a while back as well. I uh, love it. Uh, basically, uh, if you look at it, you know, this way. It says, I love you. And if you spin it, uh, it doesn't say I love you anymore. So uh, it's just one of those little cool things that you can test out and kind of get an idea of what's going on with your print before you print it. <clears throat> um, like I said, you can create as many libraries as you'd like. Um, you can create new libraries by uh, clicking the button here. Uh, you can bulk edit your libraries. You can uh, add creators to your system here so that you can assign different uh, different STLs or OBJs to different creators if you wanna do that. It's not necessary, but you absolutely could if you wanted to do that. Uh, it, it, it's pretty straightforward to install. So let's take a look at that. If we come over to here, back to this GitHub page, and this will be linked in the description down below. Um, you can click on where it says Docker Compose Example YML, and we can get an idea of kind of what's going on here. This is a version three Docker Compose. Our, our service app is uh, Van Dam. We're using the latest image there, uh, port 3214. You can change that if you want, but if you do, only change the first half of that. Uh, below that, the volume, the path to your libraries. Now, this is a folder that needs to be accessible on your network. So what I've done here, if I can find it. So here are a couple of uh, shared folders that I have set up on the Studio Lab uh, hardware that I've got set up specifically for these videos. And if I come in here into data, here we can see I've got STL Manager. And in here, you can see I've got a couple of libraries, uh, one from Aquarium Decor and one called New Library, just to kind of show the difference. Now, the one thing I do wanna make note of here is that your libraries, your STL or OBJ files have to be in a folder like this. If you just drop 
uh, a library or a, an OBJ or an STL into the root of your library folder, it won't pick it up, it won't recognize it. Uh, so make sure that you create your <clears throat> folders like this, um, where it's, you know, in, in my case, aquarium dash decor, new dash library, name them whatever you'd like to name them. Just know that, they, that your libraries need to be named in this convention. Now inside here, I do have a couple of STLs uh, in each one, oops, that's the same one, and in there as well. So what I wanna do here <clears throat> is, um, this. I'm going to come over here to Portainer. Uh, this is my Studio Lab Portainer here. You don't have to use Portainer. I just like to use it for these demonstrations. Uh, I'm going to click on Add a Stack. Uh, I'm going to do STL Manager like so. Um, so anyway, now we can kind of continue on with the rest of looking at this uh, Docker Compose file here. Uh, below that, we've got it below the volume that we've already taken a look at. This is the path to that STL Manager library that we're looking at here. Below that, we've got an environmental variable uh, set up here with a database URL of Postgres SQL. Uh, we've got a username and a password in here. Oops, let's not do that. Uh, but username and password, um, and then we're actually going to connect down here uh, to the host. Um, and then we've got a secret key uh, base. Change that as you see fit. It just needs to be a long string of characters. Um, below that, we've got a grid size of 260. Uh, I've done some testing. It doesn't seem to matter. Uh, the, the, the low resolution that we see uh, when we enter uh, one of these, take a look at this, uh, this kind of, uh, you know, like late 90s graphics here. Um, I upped this to 500 and didn't notice a difference. So I'm not sure what uh, that 260 grid is for. Um, I didn't, I didn't notice it in, in the documentation. So I, maybe I missed it. Uh, below that, we've got two dependencies. We've got a database and a Redis container. <clears throat> And of course, below that, we've got our database and Redis containers. Uh, we're using, again, Postgres version 13. We've got a, a Docker volume here for DB data. Uh, this one doesn't need to be public. This doesn't need to be accessible. You don't need access to this container once it's up and running uh, as far as the files within. <clears throat> um, so we've got our environment of a Postgres user and database or password. Uh, the, whatever, if you want to change your username and password, you need to change it here and here. Uh, but also back up here for the username and the password as well. So make sure that those all line up accordingly. Um, below that, we've got, again, our Redis for caching. Um, and then both of those are restart on failure. <clears throat> uh, once we're happy with that, we can just click on deploy the stack. Uh, we'll give this a minute to deploy. And then once it's up, we should have three containers, again, for the application, uh, the database, and the Redis container. Uh, so we'll give this just a moment. There we go. Um, so then we can open this back up and take a look. Uh, let's look at the log files here. So here it says it's preparing the database. So once this is actually spun up, uh, we'll come back and take a look. Okay, so it looks like this may be up and running. So let's go ahead and click on here. There we go. Um, so right here it's saying, hey, what is the path to your library? Now uh, it's asking kind of like the, the complete path and it's a bit misleading in my opinion, um, sort of. So basically if we come back over here to Portainer, we look at our editor, uh, this is, our full path, right? Uh, however, what it's actually looking for is this slash libraries right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste in slash libraries and click save. So now it's gonna, it's gonna go through and scan our library. Uh, while it's doing that, I'm just gonna open this up in a new tab and press go. Here we go. We've got our, our two different libraries available here uh, for Aquarium Decor and New Library. And of course, we come back to here, we can see Aquarium Decor and li New Library. It takes that, uh, the, the hyphenated uh, folder names and then redoes them uh, in actual, you know, camel case, if you want to call it that. And of course, if we come in here and click open, uh, you know, we can, we can take a look at uh, these STL files. Again, we can spin them around, you know, we can do what we want to do here. Um, so that's, that's kind of the basics of it. Uh, if we come back over here to, uh, of course we can download from here as well. That's just something, uh, we can, we can add new libraries. If we want to do that. We can do a bulk edit. Uh, if we want to do that, if we come over here to creators, uh, we can add creators to our system. Now these aren't users. These are creators uh, that we can assign STLs to if we wanted to try to remember who created a file, uh, whether it was me or something I downloaded from something somebody else. Um, you can give kind of give credit, uh, whether it's giving credit deliberately or just for your own uh, sake of remembering where you got that file. Uh, you can create new creators and then uh, assign those creators to different STLs as you see fit. Uh, but that's basically it. That is that is kind of the process of setting this up. Um, and again, if um, if you drop an STL or an OBJ into the root of your STL manager library folder, uh, the system won't recognize it. So make sure you put it in one of uh, a folder that's in this naming 
convention here. So that's kind of the gist of it. It was pretty straightforward, but there were a couple of little setup things that weren't terribly intuitive in my opinion. So I wanted to share this with you. Hopefully you find this video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. Really does help. Uh, also, if you want to support the channel, there are some links in the description down below where you can do that. Um, <clears throat> also, again, all of this will be linked in the description as well. Uh, if you've got other uh, comments, questions, ideas, thoughts, whatever, leave those in the comment section. I will try to address those uh, as necessary. But I think with all of that being said, I am going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.